The structure of the single-player JRPG Xenoblade Chronicles is one of the strongest aspects of the entire game. The game takes place in a world that's made up of two giant titans, the Bionis and the Mechonis. They're locked together in an eternal battle of sword fighting and stand tall and still. As you explore this setting, you travel to a new part of each of the titans' bodies. Along the way, you'll encounter many cities, towns, caverns, grassy plains, and much more. As you travel through these areas, you'll do many quests. The questing system in Xenoblade feels very much like something you would find in an MMORPG. Each area you visit will have generic NPCs that give you quests such as collect X amount of items, kill X amount of a certain enemy type, and stuff like that. These quests may seem boring on paper, but it's the way the game handles these quests that makes them interesting. Once you accept these quests from a random NPC, you don't have to go back to that NPC to turn them in once they're completed. And oftentimes, the things they ask you to collect, or the monsters they ask you to fight, you'll be fighting anyways as you progress through the game's story. And the amount of money and experience you gain from completing these quests will most likely mitigate the amount of grinding you would have to do in order to complete the game. There's also a ton of NPCs in each area that aren't just generic. They all have names and relationships to other NPCs in the area, and they have set schedules where they play out the daily activities of their lives. Completing quests for them and seeing how their relationships change and grow is one of the most fascinating aspects of the entire game. The minute details packed into each area of the game is insane. Talking to everyone around town and exploring every nook and cranny of the environments is something I love doing in RPGs, and this game rewards you for that heavily. Considering you can view an affinity chart and see every named NPC in the game and what relationships they have with each other. Seeing their relationships change and grow as you complete quests is fascinating. The characters in your party also form relationships with each other as you do quests, progress in the story, or do certain moves in combat. The game's story, world, and characters feel very lived in and develop as you explore the world. When you start off the game, Shulk and Ryan, two of the main characters, really feel like they've been friends since childhood, like the game insists. The game throws you into this massive of conflict between the Makans and the Homs. They have this huge war going on, the Mechons being from the Makanis Titan and the Homs being from the Bionis Titan. It's a story about man versus machine essentially, and the way you see it played out is super compelling. You see, there's a blade that the Homs use in order to fend off the Mechons. It's called the Monado, and Shulk is the only true user of it. He can wield the Monado and even use its power to see in the future. He uses this to defeat the Mechons and to save people throughout the story. He's a really compelling main character, and all the other characters are amazing as well. The world of the game feels like it's been functioning well before the game started, and it feels like it still functions when you turn the game off. This is something an RPG like Pokemon, for example, doesn't do very well. The game's characters in that game just stand around, waiting for you to talk to them to trigger events in the story. The world of Xenoblade Chronicles feels alive and fun to explore throughout, with very well-developed characters and very meaningful side content. Overall, I love this game, and I think you should try it if you're looking for a good JRPG. Until then though, why don't you subscribe to my channel for more content and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.